from myjewelrybench.com and today we're going to do a little bit more of uh, some tutorials on working with Blender. There is a function in Blender that uh, I use a lot to help me design jewelry and we're going to cover that today. It's called following a path and it allows you to have a number of items follow along a path without item distortion. First, I'm going to show you how items can be distorted when you try to, like, let's say you wanted to have several diamonds follow a, a path along a jagged line, and you'll see that the items get distorted. We're going to do this by uh, using a curve and a, and, a, and a cube. So I want to show you that first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cube by hitting Shift A. And I'm going to go over to Add Mesh, down to Cube, and we're going to size this down just a little bit so it fits in our screen. The next thing I want to do is to add a path. So I'm going to hit Shift A again. We're going to go to Curve, and then I'm going to hit a, uh, let's just select a Bezier curve. So let's move the cube out of the way. Let's go to, on the keypad, we'll hit 7 so we have a top-down view, and you can see that we have this this curve that's not straight. I'm going to distort it a little bit more by selecting it, pressing the tab key to go into edit mode. I'm going to grab this over here, press G, and we're just going to kind of turn it around, we'll grab this one, and we'll kind of bend it like that. I'm going to select all, and then go over to the tools uh, tab on the left and hit subdivide. So we get another one here, and I'm just going to grab this and move it up like that, just to give us an arch. This is just for a perspective idea of how we have distortion when we follow along a path. Now, there's two rules of thumbs that you can have an item follow along this curve. And how we do it the first way with distortion is we're going to select our, our cube. We're going to size that down a little bit more. And under the cube properties, I'm going to come over to the add modifier right here. Select the modifier. And I'm going to turn on my key cast here so that we got keys pressing here, screen cast. Now at least you can see what keys I'm pressing. So I'm going to add the modifier of array. So we're going to generate an array. And you can see here, if I increase the number of the count, we get more. And if I give it a little separator there, you can see the four cubes here. And then in our count under the array properties, we have four there. I'm going to set that to 5. Now, I want this cube or this array of these cubes to follow along this path. So how I do that is I come over to the cube, select the cube. I'm going to add another modifier and we're going to call that a curve modifier or curve deform. And then I'm going to come down here where it says under the curve modifier, object and we can select our Bezier curve. And you can see it kind of put it in an awkward place, and that's okay. We're, we're just going to move that along and uh, try to get that centered onto my curve. There we go. <clears throat> so by using the green arrow, you can see that I've kind of made it go along there. And now if you look, I can use the x-axis and move this along the, uh, the curve path. I'm going to give this a count of seven, and you can see how when it exits the end of the curve, it kind of straightens itself out. But as we kind of follow along the path, if I scroll in here, zoom in here, you can see that the cubes are no longer square. We only have one square one right here, and all the other ones are basically slightly deformed. And you can see that in the shape. I'm going to go to the perspective top view you can see that they don't match. Well, that's not going to work in jewelry because when we're designing jewelry, we want these things to be perfectly designed to hold a stone, whether it's a square stone, a marquee, a round, an oval, whatever we're, we're working with, we want these shapes to be perfect. So here you can see we have a deformation in our cubes, which isn't going to work. I'm going to delete these cubes. And I'm going to go over to uh, a library of things I have called Blender Gems. I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to come down to uh, 
diamonds. And hopefully it picks it up. And it didn't. Let's try that again. Alt X. Diamonds. There we go. And I'm going to grab. Let's just grab a round. Here's the round one. I'm going to import that. I'm going to size that down a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to give this an array modifier. I'm going to make this. Uh, we'll make this six. I'm going to space it out just a little bit. I'm going to size this down so it's more like this. And then I'm going to add a curve modifier. Again, we're going to go to the add modifier, come down to the curve deformation, and select under object your Bezier curve. And that's the object that we're going to follow. So here you can see that we've got these diamonds and they're following a slight path. And I'm going to size these up a little bit to make them right about there. And now I'm going to hit the seven key on the keypad which will give us a top-down view and you can see that none of the diamonds are perfectly round anymore they're all deformed and if I get rid of this path here you can see the diamonds are in the proper shape they're nice and round I'm gonna go back and add that and now they're all kind of oblong well of course we're not gonna get diamonds like that so we're gonna do something a little bit differently I'm gonna get rid of these diamonds here and we're going to leave the curve, but we're going to do a couple things differently. And you can search YouTube for this, uh, this example too, but I want to demonstrate it here. So under follow path, which is a completely different function in Blender, we can actually have our shapes follow this path without any deformation whatsoever. So I'm going to add a cube, shift A under mesh, we'll add a cube, I'm going to size it down. Uh, down here, S, size it down. And now what I want to do is I want to select how many cubes I want. So I, I think I want six cubes. So with the cube selected, I'm going to go back to my properties on the right side. I'm going to select this little box here. And I'm going to come down to where it says duplication. And I'm going to select frames. And here you'll see start at one, on one, end at 100 off at zero. Now I only want six so I'm going to select where it says 100 and I'm going to change that to six. I'm also going to turn off speed. So we're going to leave that there. Now I'm going to select my curve. So with the curve selected I'm going to go over to its properties, the curve properties, and I'm going to come down to follow path animation and you can see where it says frames, we're gonna change that to six. And what I wanna do is match the number of cubes to the number of frame animations. And this is, this is a, a much more detailed function in Blender. You don't have to worry about it. Just follow along right now with me. So now that I have this selected to six frames and I have the cube, which we have modified to end at the sixth cube, I'm going to select my cube first hold the shift key down and select the curve so that the cube has got an orange rim around it and the curve is yellow. Now with that done, we're going to press control P and that's going to bring up our parenting menu. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to follow path. So you're going to select follow path and you can see now that our cubes are kind of following the path along. Well, I'm going to just select the cube and I'm going to move that in and out until we get it to the point where I want it. Let's see here. Right there. That's good. And now I can select the cube and I can rotate it along the z-axis just to kind of give it a little bit of a, of a uh, following path. So what you'll notice here is that I was kind of messing around with the wrong keys. I pressed Shift-O, but what you really want to press here to get the cubes to follow the path in the correct manner is once you've done the, uh, the path following option, you want to press Alt-O, and that will set the cubes along the path in their proper manner. So remember Alt-O, and that's a function that you're going to do after you use Control-P. <clears throat> Alt O. There we go. 
RZ. RZ. And now you can see that my cubes are following the exact length of the path. If I make this path larger by selecting it and then pressing the S key, you can see everything gets a little bit larger. If I select the cube, I can make the cubes bigger or smaller independently. But we're parented to this. And I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. S. We're going to grow these cubes up like that. Now if I press the 7 key on the keypad, you'll see that all our cubes are perfectly square. None of them are deformed as they were with the curve modifier. So the follow path gives you a much more accurate rendition of reality when you're setting a, a, a stone or a head or whatever you're doing along a certain path. Following the path is kind of important. And we're going we're gonna to actually get rid of these cubes. We're going to leave that there. I'm going to bring in a diamond and select that right there. And I'm going to move that right there. Just for giggles, I'm just going to kind of move this over here. Okay, so now I've got my diamond here. Our path properties are still, if we look at the, our curve, we're still under path animation and we're still set to 6. So now what I want to do is I want to do the same thing we did the cube. I'm going to select the diamond. I'm going to come over to the properties, go down to frames, and I'm going to select 6, press enter. I'm going to select my diamond, hold the shift key down and select the path. And then I'm going to press control P and then I'm going to follow the path. Now that should give us, and it didn't, why didn't it, oops, speed, there we go. Okay, so now if we look at this, we're not quite on the same rotation. Yes, I'm going to size these down. But you can see right here, this dotted line is what connects us. And if I move this over to here, right there, so that our points are kind of in the same place, now we follow the path. Now the cool thing about this is if I want to add more gemstones to this, with the diamond selected, I can come over here and select more here and then go to my curve properties select uh, the curve properties here and we'll add however many gems we want now keep in mind these two should match so if i have 10 diamonds i should select my diamond and make sure that under its properties i have 10. Again, we're going to hit the 7 key on the perspective uh, downward view and we're going to look and you can see that each one of these diamonds is now perfectly round and following the path. The cool part about this is that if I want to change the way the path looks, I can select the path, press the tab key to edit it. I could grab any one of these points and move it anywhere I want and you can see I'm kind of following along where my diamonds are going to be just by selecting and moving these little markers anywhere I want. So that's pretty cool because now I can place this whole piece along the surface of an item that I'm designing without any distortion. The same would go for how I place heads, how I place prongs, any of that. So that's how we do follow path. Now on our website under this article you'll see complete instructions written down It's 12 steps to actually have an object follow the path. So I hope you uh, uh, get a chance to read that because it, it's really uh, it's really useful when we do when we work with this because it's the only way to add something in blender at the current point in this version of blender without any distortion along a curve perhaps in a future version we'd like to see uh, an object follow a path without distortion by using just the curve modifier so hopefully they come out with that modification but just in case we don't have it now and this is the way I handle it. So that's a useful thing. Again, this is how we follow a path. I want you to practice this because we'll be using this in future episodes. In next week's episode, I'm going to uh, take a, a ring and we're going to follow, we're going to actually use 
plugs to remove uh, stone placement parts of the ring and then I'm going to put the stones in there so we get like a 3D view of what we're designing and you'll see that we'll, we'll cover this more in depth. If you like this video and you found it helpful, practice it. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and give it a thumbs up if you can share it and keep an eye out looking for us on Patreon because anything that uh, you can help do, uh, you know, whether it's 50 cents or one time donation will help keep these videos coming. So I hate to beg, but that's my little pitch for today. Again, subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and take care. Have a good day, guys.